Hi there, this is Art and Such, and today I've got a video for you of how to make this particular kind of dream catcher. It looks sort of like a spider web, I think. Um, let me show you the materials and we'll get started right away here. Okay, so you are going to need a hoop or ring. You can decide on the size. I would recommend going a little bit smaller on this because it will use a lot of thread. You need some kind of thread yarn string. I'm going to use um, waxed straw colored thread. You need some strips of leather. Um, I'm using this kind of maroon. You do want to trim them so they're relatively even, maybe half a centimeter or a little narrower across. And what I like to do at the ends is cut it on a diagonal so that one end will line up to the other and it makes for a nice smooth seam. I would recommend a bead for the middle. I found this cute little pink green one I'm going to use. Uh, scissors, a tacky leather glue. And the brand I have is Eileen's. Uh, I like to use a little bit of clear nail polish. This is old, so it's not so clear anymore. But clear nail polish to seal at the end. And I believe the only other things you'll need are a needle to thread with. And you want one with a large enough eye. And I, I've misplaced my, my paintbrush, so I'm just going to use a spoon to transfer the glue onto my hoop. You can use a toothpick, a popsicle stick, uh, anything else that you find handy. Now I don't have um, a great camera stand set up here so I'm going to lay this down and I'll pick it up to show you different parts as we go along. Okay so we're going to start by wrapping the hoop and for that you'll need a little bit of glue and you'll want to have a couple of moderately longer strips of your leather ready. So what we do is we get a little bit of glue. You can shake or stir it a bit if you need to. Mine's been sitting for a while, so probably not a bad idea. You don't need a lot. Just a little dab. And we're going to put it right onto the ring. Put your, your glued piece on the side. And you can take your leather, press it where the glue is and start wrapping. So I'm holding it in place. If you want to keep your thumb there until it's dry, you can do that or you can put on um, a twist tie to hold it still. It should take probably 20 to 30 seconds. And when you're ready, we're gonna wrap the leather over, press it under, bring it around. Now hopefully you'll have a piece that's long enough to span your whole circle, but if not, then you can attach the next piece the same way that we put on the first piece, which is probably what I'll have to do. So we're doing this tight. As I said, if you want to let that first part uh, harden and, and secure before you wrap it, then you'll have both hands free. That's one option. Oh, mine just got sprung a little bit loose there. Twist it a bit tighter. And we'll keep going. It's probably dry enough I can take my hand off for a minute. So just over and under. And keep bringing it around until you run out of leather or out of hoop. I think it's almost time for me to get my next piece ready. Alright, so I'm 
going to trim this a little bit more bluntly here, I think. And can go back for a bit more glue. Put it on the ring where that piece of leather is going to go, where the tail end will go, but also leave a little bit more for your next piece. And we want to try and line them up as best we can. And hold it and continue wrapping. I'm just going to put the lid over my glue for the moment so it doesn't get too dry while we're waiting. I want to try to overlap these pieces a little bit better here. Just as a side note here, um, if one of your pieces is longer, if it goes past that starting point, you have the option of stopping it right there and then you could add on another piece for the, um, for the holder, the, the loop, or if you have enough extra tail, I'll show you what you can do here. Just a minute. Almost dry. I think I'm going to put a little extra glue on there right away though. I don't really trust this piece. Okay, so this is back to the beginning. I'm just going to let it sit for a minute because yeah, this glue is really old. It's not sticking very well. Just bear with me. We'll get this fixed. Put a little more on the new piece. We'll hold it for about 20 seconds. re-glue that first part. Now as I said if you want to put a lot of glue on, if you want to leave it for a little while, if you have a different glue that works better, those are also options. And if you want to secure it with um, something like a twist tie while it dries, you can do that as well. So I'm just fixing up my beginning part. I had a thicker piece to start and it's come loose. So let's secure that better and then we can proceed. Gonna need a little bit of extra glue here anyways because oh, we've got the other end to secure now so this is my starting point and what I'm gonna do is take my, my finishing part and bring it wrap it over a couple of times over the start and we'll just hold that for again a few seconds here twist tie or again a clip if you want or you can leave it or you can make a little knot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start my weaving from that top point and then when this is done we're going to do something a little bit like this and it'll cover the start of the threads knots and it'll also secure that ending point. So that should be okay for now. I'm going to make sure the lid is on my glue and we're going to cut the thread. And I have to apologize, I don't have a specific formula for the length of this, and I haven't done this in a while, so you might have to try out a longer length and then adjust, um, or just, you know, see, depending on the thickness of your thread and the size of your loop. I think mine's probably about a six inch um, across. You can kind of take a, take a guess here, take a stab at it. So I think for mine, I'm going to find the end and I'm going to unroll it and let me just think here. 
I really don't want this to run out, so I'm gonna try and do, I think about three yards to three meters worth. So I'm gonna do it the span of my arm, like one arm's end to the other, and back. And the reason that this uses up a lot of your thread is because it, it goes in concentric circles and they're tight little circles. So, yeah. So I'd say that's close to three meters. I'm gonna try that. I think that should be enough and plenty, but for something like this, you do wanna try to err on the side of too much rather than too little. Take one end and you're going to tie it around your starting point, which as I said for me will be um, right where I've started and finished. So I'm going to tie it in a knot over the ring. It's okay if it covers a little bit of the leather because as I said we can do a nice finishing loop over that later. I like to do three knots with this because this wax is a little bit slippery. That reminds me I am I might not be able to lift the camera too, too often once this is on because it gets tacky on the skin. But I will do my best here. And you want to leave just a little bit of a tail on your thread. It doesn't have to be a lot and you will trim it after, but it would be a shame for this to slip off because you don't have enough um, thread on that knot. Yeah. Okay. So here I've tied it on. And the next thing is going to be to put the other end through the needle. So I'll find the end of my thread, which is here, and slide it through the needle. And you can pull it probably almost halfway. Okay. So the first time around is going to look like your standard dream catcher. We're going to so I, I like to do about two and a half to three inches, two inches um, across. And what you're going to be doing is, how can I show you this? Okay, you're going to hold it over the side of the ring and your needle will go behind and it's going to come up and through this hole that you've created. And once everything's through, you'll carefully pull this tight. This is incidentally the same knot, exact same knot you use for your basic macrame stitch, which I always thought was kind of neat. Okay, pull it tight. Careful of your leather there. So that's the first, the first piece, the first stitch. And we're gonna go down about the same distance, so turn it sideways and repeat. So it goes over and under and back through. And we're gonna make our way all the way around the circle. And I knew that was gonna happen. My stick with the glue wants, is trying to get caught in my thread. So if you do have anything in the way at this point, you might wanna um, move it to the side so that it's out of the line that your thread can catch. So that's two. You do want to keep holding them, keep tension on, and we're going to continue the rest of the way around. So once more, let me move the scissors out of the way, and we'll keep going. Actually a really nice day out. I was thinking about doing this video outside and I even thought it would be um, uh, a little bit easier because I wouldn't have to put down the newspapers or anything to keep things clean but I was thinking then since I've got glue and whatnot it would be it would be a shame to get leaves or um, or fluff or mosquitoes caught in the uh, caught in leather. Just needed a little bit more glue there. Sorry. One more delay. 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If, you, if you're going well here, jump ahead in the video and I will be with you in just a minute. be able to see and tell you soon how many I'm going to have coming around on mine. Now again this is the spacing I've chosen for this piece. If you have a smaller hoop you might put your um, your notches closer together or you could put them further apart. If you want your thread to go a little bit longer you might want to space them a little further apart. If you have a large hoop I really would recommend spacing these wide. Although the tighter they are, the more intricate it will look. But just in terms of you know making your making your life easier, like how this one's sitting. Let's see if we can move it over just a little bit. It's so sticky. first row and it gets a little bit actually a lot easier after this so just bear with me almost there okay um, I think I'm gonna make this one go over a little bit so I'll loosen it up and once I loosen this up I can loosen this one up and bring this one more to the right and then re-tighten it and then bring this one over a little bit and that should make it more even when I come back to the center. Okay, and we'll get that out of the way. And let me hold this up to show you. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. The last one is gonna go from the right to the left under the knot. And Ideally, you want to have that, I don't know that mine worked out quite perfectly, but ideally you'd like to have that bottom piece line up with the top. Okay, so I'm gonna take my needle and thread and bring it back right to left through the knot and that will make a full first circle. You might have to wiggle it a little bit, it's gonna be sort of tight there. Yay, I'm excited. This is actually going, going pretty well. Okay, so this is your top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the needle and we're going to go back to that first piece. You're going to go down through here, up through here. So it goes, and keep this as tight as you can still. So. So it goes down, you're going to go to the second hole that you made, go down under, and then go back up through the first one. I'm going to pull that tight and show you what that looks like. And you can maybe see this is trying to catch underneath, you want to make sure it stays on the top. So like so. It goes under, back over, it loops through. I'll pull it tight. And it's almost going to look like they're right in line on top of each other, and that's what we want. We're going to go to the third one now. So here's the top. That first notch, the second notch, the third notch. We're going to go into the third loop and back up through that second loop. And we're going to come all the way around doing the same, very same thing. You'll see this starts to go pretty quickly. Okay, nice and tight. There you go. And I'm going to go the rest of the way around, I'll show you what that looks like, and then we'll start on the third lap, at which point you'll probably get the gist of this if you haven't already. And we'll race through the end. Although, as I said, this this isn't terribly hard, I don't think, but it does take a little bit of time. So you might find yourself jumping ahead in the video. I won't take offense. 
um, especially if you have a smaller smaller hoop, you might not need to do as many rounds. I'm really hoping that I cut enough thread. That's the the only big uncertainty principle in these for me is I really I haven't figured a formula. So if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I know for for making friendship bracelets, like I generally do an arm's length, um, an arm's length of each thread, and if I need to double it over, I do twice an arm's length, and if okay. Um, and then if it's going to be a piece that uses a lot of thread, then I just do extra long. Okay, so we're back at the beginning, and we're going to go under and up through. So now we're using the, the start of the last round. Okay. And there we are so far coming along nicely and now when we go back we're going to find that second round and go under here up through here this actually feels a little bit loose so I'm going to tighten it up and then we'll do that just giving them all a pull on that second round and there we are through that second um, second piece and back up and this is exactly what we're going to do until we get to the middle and don't worry don't worry that the spacing looks a little bit funny there it's gonna even out the more we do just gonna loosen up my thread here a little bit and bring the needle further towards the end because we've used some of it up so we want more to work with now. So between the two lines there and up through the two lines. And we keep going around like so. I like this thread with the wax on it because it makes it um, gives it a little bit more stability and it does make it smooth in a way, but it adds a little bit of friction as well, even, even though that sounds like the opposite thing, but it's really easy to thread it on a needle and if for some reason you don't have a needle, it's not so bad to work with with your hands, but it does get sticky. And that goes away when by the time you're you're done around here. But yeah. Okay, I'm coming back to the top here. Um, we'll go back through the last row's top loop. Why not? Should be this one. And there, and I'll hold it up for you again. As I said, the tension should even out as you go, but you can always tighten and adjust um, well, along the way. So I'm uh, back to the start. Find the notches on the second. Find the one furthest in. Go under, and we'll come up through the set on top, the one closest to the middle. My length seems to be working okay so far. Uh, if you find that your thread is running short, I don't have any great solutions, but what I have done in the past is tied it off, put on some, and again, two or three knots if you can, put on some nail polish to harden it, 
Well, this has to go back. I went through the wrong hole. Um, and then you can tie on another knot and put some nail polish on to secure that. I like to put a little bit of clear nail polish, as I said, over the knots just to, uh, to keep them strong once everything's done. I don't know if that looks like the right one. No, I think I had it right the first time. Okay, try this again. You will find as you as you get closer into the middle, these do sort of tighten up, and that makes each time around go a little bit slower, or or makes it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it quite, but it's like the closer to the middle you are, the more rows you're going to be doing in that section. Like there will be more pieces here than there are here, because everything gets a little bit closer unless you're doing things really loosely. I'm being a little sloppy with my tension because I'm trying to do this quickly enough for you, but I uh, seem to be doing okay. So that's back around the middle again. And you can see these first couple are kind of loosening up, evening up more. The inner ones still look really tight, and each time you pull it in, it stretches them out more so that you do get more of that evenness, evenness as you go. And I bring my needle closer to the end again. Okay. And let's go back to the next notch. So under and back up through. And we'll keep going around. You know, I didn't mention, and I know it's traditional, but um, you do always have the option of adding some fringe or some, some feathers to the bottom. And if you wanted to put more beads on, of course you could do that as well. These are stuck together. No, nope, it's just that. But yeah, if you wanted to take some of your leather strips and wrap them around in a couple of places, you could glue those glue those on, knot them on. You can add some beads down there. Entirely up to you. Sometimes I put feathers on my dream catchers and sometimes I don't because if they end up sitting around a while, I know with my luck they are bound to get kind of crushed. If they're going to hang right away, then it's not a big deal, but yeah, if it's something you're planning to put on a box for a while or you're going to give or sell later, you might want to save the feathers until until that point just because that, that would be I mean that usually is the most delicate and easily breakable part of a dream catcher project I find um, if you are wanting to do feathers and you're not sure how to attach them you can check some of my some of my other dream catcher videos do feature feathers and I believe I show you I show in some of those um, one or two, one or two ways to attach. So usually I've got a standard method, which which is yeah to put on the leather strands and then put the beads over and put the feathers into the beads. Or maybe you have um, a method you do already that you like, and you can always stick to that too. Okay, I'm gonna come back around to the top here, and we'll give you another look. That 
picture I showed you at the front, it was a pretty small dream catcher and I used this, um, this thread that I use when I'm making earrings, the dream catcher earrings. It's so pretty, but that stuff snaps and it twists and it tangles. Such a pain to work with, but if you, when you have the patience, sometimes the, the thinner, more delicate threads give you a nice effect. Okay, I think that's about the beginning part again. So I'm going to show you, this is it so far. And uh, depending on the size of your bead and how large your hoop is, you, you might be almost ready now yourself to add the bead on. If you are, you can jump ahead a bit. If you uh, still need some time, then stick with me. And I'll keep bringing this in closer to the middle. And when it's about the size of the bead, then I will put my bead on. And it just occurred to me, I didn't check to see whether my bead will fit on this needle. So hopefully it will be okay. If not, I might have to, to pause and get something to wire it on with or try just putting the thread through or something. Shoot, I didn't, didn't consider that. As I said, I haven't made one of these in a while, so reasonable to think there'd be something I would forget. These are getting really tight here. If, you, uh, if you're really struggling here, maybe you want to put a larger bead or larger decorative piece in the middle to save your fingers from getting stuck at that very center. Or if you, maybe you don't want something in the middle, if you want to end it like this, you can tie, go back through a couple of the same spots and tie a couple knots. I'll, I'll be doing that after I put my beads on, but you can always finish early and leave a space in the middle if that's your preference. I think a bead gives a nice centerpiece, focal, focal kind of thing, focal point. You know, one thing I've done with earrings in the past, which would probably lend itself well to this kind of design, is you can get those little little fake flies at a dollar store or a gag shop um, or Halloween time. You can sew some little flies in or have them. What I've done with earrings in the past is I've had my thin thread and had a little fly attached hanging off of it, which is kind of fun. So that's another idea if you want to put like um, maybe you've got a bead or a piece of jewelry that looks like a little beetle or a ladybug you could always add one of those in and make it like a legit spider web okay almost there I'm gonna see if I can get this in just a little bit tighter so this is still larger than my bead is and I want my bead to be as much to the middle as I can so I also want to end this such that it isn't leaning, like isn't slanted too much to one side. Okay, so right there, it's about, about central. So let me find my bead, which looks like it's rolled off somewhere. I don't know. anticipate that. Is it hiding? Oh, there it is. It was behind my nail polish. Okay, it looks like the hole in this will be large enough. So what I'm going to do is take my needle, put it through the bead. Ah, perfect. Slide it to the middle. And I'm going to kind of press it into place. Now my thread went through from here. I'm gonna bring it down the opposite side and I'm just gonna stick it through a couple of the parts of the thread that are on there. And if you can manage it, you wanna go through from the back, up through the bead and up through the top. So we're gonna flip this to the back side and this will again help secure it and keep it uh, centered. So I'm coming back up through it again. Oh, shoot. Okay, now it's getting too tight here. I might not be able to do this twice with this bead. Almost, almost. Uh -oh. 
Okay, let me take the needle off and I'll see. Hmm. I'm not sure if I can get it through here, but I'm gonna try one more time. And this might be a point where you wanna try and get a different needle. Or if your bead absolutely can't get onto the thread, then you could have the option of getting a thinner needle and thread and stitching it on directly. I'm gonna wiggle this through. I'd really like to have this sewn in twice, but I'm not sure if I can. One more try. And it's getting stuck on the inside. Nope, nope, I think we got it. Yay, okay. Came through, pulled it through nice and tight. And now it's gonna sit right in the middle and I'll put that back on my needle so it's easier to work with again. Uh, once more, if you've got a larger hole, a smaller needle, thinner thread, you could do that a couple more times and secure it really well, but and this should do for our purposes. Okay, um, we're going to come up through one of the knots right above it. Trying to get into one of these little tight ones there. And when you're ready to finish this off, get your get your needle and thread to the back. So this is my back side. And loosen that a little bit. This was actually just about a perfect length here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and under. So over, under, back up. You can pick your spot. Uh, basically, I'm just tying some little knots in here. We'll just do a couple to make it a bit tighter. If you can do it in the same place, then that's really good. So that's one, and I'm going to do another one here. So I stuck it through one, and I'm going to bring it back through that same loop that I created. Get nice and tight. And next thing, I'm going to get my nail polish, put a dab on where I just finished this. This is optional if you're worried about it staining the color or uh, anything like that, then you don't have to. And I'm going to put a little bit at the top where we first tied the knot. The nail polish will, will just stiffen up the thread so it's less likely to come off. And, well, well, we could let that dry a little bit, but I'm impatient today, as you've noticed. Now you have the option of taking your tail from the leather at the top or adding another one. And I'm gonna fit it around. So this cap is a pain here. So I'm gonna stick it under. And bring it over and around and make a little bit of a knot here. And again, if you have another method you'd like to use, go for it. If you don't want to do a knot and you just want to glue it, you can do that as well. I'm going to try to bring this around to the back and back through. Here we go. And we'll stick a little bit of glue under there as well. See if I like how that looks first. That'll do. Okay, let me get my stick for the glue. We'll put a little dab. Well, I've got to loosen this up a little bit, and then we'll put a little dab underneath. And pull it tight. And brush off any excess. And we can trim that little tail. So this is what we have now. And we can now, if you're ready, cut off that thread at the back. Just leave a, a couple of millimeters, but you don't have to leave much. Okay, so I think we're done. Uh, this is what we have now. Now, as I said, if you wanted to put feathers on or extra tassels, frills, fringe, you can do that. If you want to uh, 
stick this on top of a mirror or a piece of fabric. The, the options are really limitless at this point. Okay, so that is your dream catcher, and I hope you'll check out my other videos. And thank you for watching. Take care.